protein structure has different levels and so far we focused on three of these levels. So we begin our discussion on primary structure and we said that primary structure is the sequence of amino acids within that polypeptide chain. Then we moved on to the secondary structure and we said that secondary structure is the spatial arrangement of those amino acids. It's the interaction of those amino acids that are found in close proximity on that polypeptide chain. And we said that secondary structure consists of these regular patterns we call alpha helixes, beta pleated sheets, beta turns, and omega loops. And finally, in the previous lecture, we discussed tertiary structure and we said that tertiary structure is the interaction, it's the spatial arrangement of those amino acids that are found far away on that polypeptide chain. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the final level of protein structure. So all proteins contain primary structure, the majority of proteins contain secondary and tertiary structure, and some proteins also contain a fourth and final level of structure known as quaternary structure. So a protein is said to have quaternary structure if that protein actually consists of two or more individual polypeptide chains. And the quaternary structure is basically the interaction of these polypeptides polypeptide chains with respect to one another. Now, the simplest type of quaternary structure is a dimer. In a dimer, we have two individual polypeptide chains, and these polypeptide chains can interact usually via non-covalent bonds, but sometimes we have covalent bonds such as disulfide bridges, disulfide bonds, that also hold those individual polypeptide together. Now, generally speaking, whenever we have quaternary structure, those individual polypeptide chains are also known as subunits. So, for example, in a dimer, we have two subunits. In a trimer, we have three subunits. In a tetramer, we have four subunits, and so forth. Now, these subunits can be different or they can be ident uh, identical. It really depends on the type of protein that we're discussing. Now, all the different types of proteins inside our body can usually be categorized into two categories. So we have a type of protein known as a fibrous protein, also called structural proteins, and we also have globular proteins. So let's begin by focusing on fibrous protein. So what is a fibrous protein? Well, a fibrous protein or a structural protein basically consists of these long fibers that play a structural role in the cell and in our body. So some examples are intermediate filaments, found in our cytoskeleton, we have collagen found in our connective tissue such as bone, and we have keratin found in the hair and in our nails, as well as in the wool of animals, in the horns, and in the claws of different kinds of animals. So, in this lecture, we're briefly going to focus on a specific type of keratin known as alpha carotene. So alpha carotene is the type of fibrous protein that is found in our hair and in our nails. Now alpha carotene consists of these two individual and long fibers, these polypeptide chains as shown in the following diagram. And both of these polypeptide chains essentially are composed of these right-handed alpha helixes. And these right-handed alpha helixes together intertwine twine to form a left-handed coil known as the alpha coiled coil. Now, how exactly are these polypeptide chains? How exactly are these two subunits actually held together? So notice because we have two subunits in the alpha carotene, this is an example of a dimer. So a quaternary protein that contains quaternary structure, that is actually a dimer because it consists of two subunits. So how are these two subunits actually held together? Well, they're held together by covalent and non-covalent interaction. So we have van der Waals forces that are basically the London dispersion forces between the non-polar side chains of the amino acids 
found on these two opposing subunits. We also have ionic bonds, which are basically the bonds between the negatively charged side chains and the positively charged side chains. We also have hydrogen bonds and we have a type of covalent bond known as a disulfide bond or a disulfide bridge. This is the covalent bond that is formed between two adjacent cysteine amino acids. Now, the more disulfide bonds we have inside the alpha carotene, the stronger and the more rigid that molecule is, that protein is. Now, what about globular proteins? Well, globular proteins have a very, very wide range of functions. We see that fibrous proteins are responsible mainly in giving our cells and our body structure, but these globular proteins have a wide range of functionality as we'll see in just a moment. So unlike these fibrous proteins or structural proteins that consist of long fibers, these globular proteins have a relatively spherical shape. Now, what are some examples of globular proteins? So, uh, hormones, for example, insulin is a type of hormone that is a globular protein. So we have globular proteins that play a role as hormones. We also have many enzymes in our body that are globular proteins. So we have these membrane-bound proteins, transport proteins, that essentially allow the movement of different types of ions and molecules across the cell membrane. These are also globular proteins. So DNA polymerase, is basically this protein molecule that contains quaternary structure that contains many subunits and this DNA polymerase is a globular protein. It allows the replication of the DNA during the process of mitosis and meiosis. Now the type of globular protein we're going to focus on in this lecture is hemoglobin and hemoglobin is the oxygen carrier inside our blood. So hemoglobin essentially picks up oxygen in the lungs and it moves the oxygen via the blood, the circulatory system, into the cells and tissues of our body that need the oxygen to synthesize ATP molecule. And hemoglobin has quaternary structure. In fact, it is a tetramer. It consists of four individual polypeptide subunits. So we have polypeptide subunit one, subunit two, subunit three, and subunit four. So we have two alpha and two beta subunits to form this tetramer molecule. Now, inside each one of these subunits, we have a helper prosthetic group we call the heme group. And the heme group is responsible for actually binding the oxygen via an oxidation reduction reaction. So we have heme group one, heme group two, heme group three, and heme group four. And these heme groups can bind a single oxygen molecule each. And that means because we have four subunits and each one of these carries one heme group, we can bind four oxygen molecules per hemoglobin molecule. So once again, hemoglobin is a tetramer that consists of four individual subunits. Each subunit is equipped with a heme group that is capable of binding oxygen molecules. Now, slight changes to the quaternary structure of our hemoglobin can actually increase or decrease the affinity of the hemoglobin molecule to oxygen, as we'll see when we discuss the hemoglobin molecule in much more detail. So we see that there are four levels of structure in protein. So we have primary structure, which is the sequence of our amino acids. We have the secondary structure, which are basically these regular patterns that are formed. So alpha helixes, beta sheets, beta turns, and omega loops. We have our tertiary structure, which basically consists of these amino acids that are far away from one another and they interact with one another to give that tertiary structure. And finally, we also have those proteins that contain a fourth level quaternary structure. This means that protein consists of two or more 
polypeptide chains. Now, not all proteins will contain quaternary structure. For example, an important type of protein in our muscle is myoglobin. So myoglobin, like hemoglobin, carries oxygen inside our muscle. So hemoglobin carries oxygen inside our blood, while myoglobin carries oxygen inside our muscle. Now, unlike hemoglobin, my, uh, myoglobin only contains tertiary structure, and that's because it consists of a single polypeptide chain and not four polypeptide chains like the case was in the hemoglobin molecule.